but I'm liking it. I can see that. All right, game has launched. We can get into this pretty much immediately. Let me back off here and get my minimap set. So, um, do you want to introduce the players? Can I talk about the bat? Sure thing. One second. Sure. And we're good. All right, so the map is Open Palms. The players are Whiteheart and Thistlebanger, otherwise known as Petrick and Farms. Both players have gone UEF, and both of them are opening First Land. This is a pretty classic map. What have you got to discuss about it? Uh, I think on this map, most people go for a five power generator, second air fighter first, because um, for quite a long time, it's been meta to go uh, like five power generator, second air bomber first, with the tree reclaim around your starting position, and uh, to uh, kill the hydro building engineers and expanding engineers with that first bomber. And since uh, many people know that, uh, people start uh, opening fighter first from the f uh, from the same build instead of bomber first, and um, that's how uh, how I know open palms. But I think we're going to see uh, different things. In uh, this game, because uh, Fire Snatch is uh, kind of very um, non-standard in his playstyle. He's not. I was very... about to say he's actually yeah. rushing the Hydra, which seems very weird to me. Like you get some advantages from going uh, for the reclaim in the starting position and making a second air factory in the core, or like even a second land factory could work. But uh, like standard Hydra builds are also fine. He's, uh, he's doing like the modified Hydro Rush with the extra power generator before the Hydro to bridge the distance. Looks like the second engineer is not actually assisting the Hydro, but uh, reclaiming. So that's also fine, not going to power stall. And then he's uh, reclaiming trees, building mixes. Looks like a rather eclectic version of adjacency in the middle there. I see three T1 power generators with a very weirdly spaced factory configuration. And like you said, second air factory stemming off of the Hydro. That's a weird one to me. Yeah, Looks I like think a... by tendency, I'd rather go for an air factory in the core if that finishes faster. Yeah. From the reclaim. The mech marine might be able to pick up a couple of engineer kills here. Petrick's got his ACU idle would be able to step forward if he so desired and he does but one engineer is going to go down far luck just barely <laughs> <laughs> uh farms comments always nailing it so at the beginning of this we've got three t1 power generators already built the Hydro comes online, Air Factory's up, and it's already building a bomber while Farms is only halfway done building his Air Factory with the same three T1 power generators. I think we can easily see how much more efficient Petrick's build is than Farms. Uh, Farms is going to go Scout first and Inti to prevent any intruding bombers. I wonder if the Inti... Yeah, actually, by the time the bomber is uh, on farm side of the map, the Inti can have shoot it down, ha can have shot it down, sorry, depending on whether the scout actually finds it. Looks like it's going to be looped a little bit too wide, but it will be able to catch the blip. Nope, he actually directed it away from the bomber. That is unfortunate. All right. Open Palms has always been a rather difficult map for me because I it seems like whichever side I expand to uh, with my ACU, whether that's right or left, it seems like either I'm always picking the same side that the opponent's sending the ACU to or they react that way. And then I have difficulty locking down all of the expansions. It's a deceptively large map. You would think it's kind of a choke point map just looking at it, but it is most definitively not. I think uh, the general trick on open palms is uh, not to overbuild engineers. That's what many players do. In uh, team games, it's super important uh, that you don't overbuild the engineers here because uh, raid is very strong. But also in 1v1, like, uh, you probably don't want to overbuild engineers because uh, 
a rating is just uh, very easy to pull off with uh, a map of this size. And you can see how many mixes are in the expansions. But the expansions yes. at the same time are kind of far away from your spawn. So losing an expansion hurts a lot. And each engineer you have is very important. And you may think that's exactly why you want to build many engineers. But uh, actually it's not. You want to build little engineers. If you can't protect them with the tanks, then they're going to die anyway. That's right. You want to protect the engineers very well and uh, kill the opponent's engineers. That's sort of... Patrick was just able to kill a T1 tank and a scout from farms with superior micro. He got both. Yeah, I guess the scout doesn't really add any firepower, but... Uh, with the intel still... advantage, though, you would think that farms would go into it with better positioning and able to micro better. Possibly, yes. Patrick got it blind. Really, on this map, you only have four mexes that are guaranteed to you, because even the two outside your base are pretty easily raided, especially if you lose control of one side of the map or the other. And the back three are definitely not guaranteed to you. So map control would be incredibly important. Key is, Especially... uh, key is probably radar and uh, scout perimeter. Or yes. just raiding your opponents so much that the fight is constantly happening on their side of the map. These are your that's, choices, pretty much. That's one of the things that I struggled with very early on, because the first couple of times that I played open palms, I lost to what I think were technically inferior players, like lower rated, and then once you get into the actual mechanics of the game, I could beat them. But they had the more dispersed play style, like you were talking about earlier. And they got in early raids, and it took me a long time to get to the point where I could anticipate the raids and recover from the raids and not get thrown totally off balance. I think raid is also where faction uh, differences are most apparent. Like, Siren always going to be the faction that raids. Uh, yes. Seraphim too. And uh, Aeon going to be the faction that defends against raid. And uh, UEF sort of in between. Looking at build power scaling up, we've already got a T2 factory upgrade queued for farms. He's going to go for Pillar Rush, and we've got five total land factories on his side, where on the other, we have got seven land factories with eight planned and a single air factory for Petrick. So Petrick is definitely going much more for T1 land spam, whereas farms, I think, is going to try to clump up some pillars and go for wiping out the expansions a little bit later on in the game. Do you think the tech rush is viable on this? Or with how large the map is, do you think it's more appropriate to have T1 units everywhere? It's hard to tell. This tech rush is incredibly ballsy. And uh, what Petrich is doing is a very old school way of uh, playing open pawns. It uh, tends not to fail, but the farms is known for exploiting the pillars. He's uh, very good at using them and he's got a quite good idea of how strong they are. So if anyone can make it work, it's uh, probably going to be farms. So uh, I'm hesitant to saying what's going to happen. I think if any regular player would try a pillar rush like that, it's going to fail. Petrich has the information he needs because the factory is grayed out. He knows pillars are coming and uh, he's probably going to expect farms to scale up the production too, adding support factories. But uh, the question is, is he going to be able to counter it? Because uh, misjudging the strength of pillars is uh, something that happens to high rated players as well. And it's not easy. Patrick has actually cleaned out the left side expansion of farms. So that's going to be a little bit of an eco advantage to the north side. He's also moving his ACU down to secure that expansion and ensure the map control. A bit of a forward move. I don't think his ACU is going to be in any immediate danger, but it is brave. I will grant him that. Farm's moving his ACU up on the right side as well, although not to as great a degree, I think. He's not all the way out on the 4-max core. If both players really uh, see what's happening, then I believe uh, Farm should die, because uh, when you have two overextending ACUs in enemy territory, then uh, T1 spam is going to be more efficient at killing the ACU than T2 spam, even if it's pillars, because of overcharge. And, uh, like, yes. honestly, if Petrich just took all of his factories and rallied them 
to um, the place slightly above the plateau in the center. He could uh, like uh, prepare a perfect pincer maneuver against Fars. And uh, well, Fars just has uh, less units and the same number of overcharge uh, is going to kill a much uh, larger amount of uh, firepower. So I think uh, Petrich yes. is relatively safe there, but uh, Farms is uh, quite exposed. And what he's doing is quite risky. There's a run by happening on the south side. Of course, uh, like I was saying earlier, the expansions all the way in the corners of the map are most definitively not guaranteed you should you claim them. Actually got tanks moving down from both edges. I like the farms has got the point defense and radar down, so that should kill off all the tanks, but he may still lose a couple of mass extractors. Also losing mexes in his right side expansion, so getting harassed quite thoroughly, but he has broken down the front door with his pillar spam. He's got units right up next to the base. Petrick is going T2. He's got a factory about 50% upgraded, now shifting his build power to go for point defense to defend it. I think this might turn into a mass donation for farms. Well, from farms to Petrick, I should say. I think you can really see how mass efficient the pillars are. The point defense uh, did help a little bit. But uh, that's the good thing are insane. Uh, that's the good thing about playing on a map of this size because you can keep the pillars away from the ACU. So you can, for the most part, evade overcharges, but yeah, you're still going to end up having fewer units to spread across the map. And those pillars are going down to the T1 swarm there in the center. Looks like Farms might be able to get into the rear of the base as well and eliminate Petrick's eco back there. Uh, T1 point defense going down though, so that becomes a little less likely. Petrick definitely seeing what's going on. Good map awareness. I wonder how Petrick is going to recover from this. <laughs> he looks dead to me. Uh, Petrick is at 59 mass income with 3,000 in reclaim. Uh, 65 mass income for Thistlebanger with 1,500 reclaim. So pretty significant reclaim advantage and about the same eco for both of these guys with a roughly even split on map control. What makes you think that Petrick is dead? Pillar count. The pillar count is climbing? Yeah, like Farms is over 20 and Petrich doesn't have a production rate anywhere near enough, the amount of Farms. And... As you can see, like Petrich has a small map control advantage, but I doubt he's going to be able to make it count against this amount of pillars. pillars if he can survive for strong. just a couple more minutes, he's already got a second support factory, very heavy assistance on his original HQ, and he's got two more support factories upgrading on the left. True you don't that. think he might be able to catch up? I'm not sure. Like Farms has a time-based production lead. It's going to take uh, Petrich a very long time to... Uh, to catch up with this simply because of how early the farms uh, started producing pillars. So even if uh, that Petrich, is true, even if Petrich has a larger scale, uh, farms already has the units on the map and they're dealing damage now. So how is Petrich going to deal with it? I think it's going to be difficult. Maybe Petrich can go uh, T3 relatively fast. And if farms doesn't pressure enough while Petrich is going T3, I could see this working out. Same for T2 air. That's probably also an option. But, uh, I think Farms, yep, he just got the gun upgrade. Oh. So he's now going to be pushing in with gun from the right. <laughs> Rip. Nope, he's actually going to the south and confusing his move orders. To the left it is. To the left, to the left, to the left. Going to pick up that radar kill. And that will let him approach without his opponent knowing exactly where he's at. Actually, T2 Mass Extractor upgrades finishing for Petrick. That's a weird thing to see at this stage of the game. Clean overcharges out for farms. He does have enough power and a storage, apparently, to get that on track. He's gonna pick up two pillars if he can overcharge right there, but he is gonna back off, wait for his other units to come in. Look at how the pillars on the left side slaughtered the expansion. 
And I think that Pillar yes. Push Farms has is actually going to kill the base, honestly. Like, Pillars are just so much more mass efficient than uh, T1 units. Looks it's... like we've got... Um... Farms has got a total of 10 pillars on the front, and Petrick has got 11. So it's actually fairly even matched, at least in that one place, but that's not counting the gun commander. Yeah, that gun commander is huge. He can just kite and move his army back, and the 11 pillars are not going to be able to kill his ACU. There would have to be some huge micro mistake, I think. And you can tell that Petrich is respecting this army a lot. At the same time, he's losing uh, many units in many places, and actually, like, the expansions too. Looks like 46 pillars total for farms, as opposed to 9 for Petrich. I think yeah. you're right, this might be wrapping up pretty quickly. So Petrich is uh, starting to invest into stationary defenses. Farms is just going to use his pillars elsewhere and ignore the base for now and probably just going to uh, pull off a map control win. Depending on how much Farms wants to try hard, he can make T2 gunships to raid the uh, plateaus. So, <laughs> Pillars win again, I guess. Let's see if Petrick can pull something out to prevent this, but I think with that ACU moving up and with the sheer number of units on hand, Farms is just going to be able to roll in and crush this base. Like, he could still overextend somehow. Maybe he is overextending now. Yeah, he's in range of three T2 point defenses, and there's a power shield. I think he's overextending. Yeah, is he AFK? Honestly, he just suicided. What is this? Oh, uh, he, he did pick up a veteran C, though. Yeah, the veteran C changes everything. Never mind. And he's going to pull back slightly away from the point defense. Actually, if he landed in an overcharge in the middle of those engineers, that would be devastating as well. Ridiculous. T2 units moving in. Yep, that's it. This playstyle is so ridiculous. Oh my god. I like Petrick trying to keep his point defense online as long as possible by building only parashields out of that... Uh, out of that land factory to just try to keep the bubbles over top and increase the HP. <laughs> nice try. And there's the control K. I thought for a minute there that he might try to get in and uh, at least mutual the ACU, but with the number of units there, there's no way that that was going to happen. Well then! That actually wraps up the tournament. Farms mopping the floor with Petrick on open pawns. That's GG. Should probably call it PG. Pillar PG. game. Pillar game. Pillar game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Might be an appropriate moniker. Oh, so the grand final is best out of one. Why? Well, because Farms won every single game up to this point, so he deserves the win. I would definitely say that.